Today on DC News Now, a shooting at Morgan State has reignited the call for more safety measures on college campuses. Uh, where are my products? Why shoppers are seeing nothing but aisles of bare shelves at this CVS location. And major voting error, how Virginia voters were mistakenly removed. And later, what happened during a Montgomery County High School football game on the sidelines. The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the News at Noon. I'm Mark Hall. Developing Now Baltimore Police have released new video this afternoon in connection to the shooting at Morgan State University. And take a look. Police say that they are looking for this group of people. They believe that they're connected to Tuesday night's mass shooting on campus. All of the victims, four men, one woman, are between the ages of 18 and 22. And police say that four of the five people shot are Morgan State students. And it happened during homecoming week at the university. Morgan State President David Wilson announced yesterday that all homecoming events are canceled. Meanwhile, local D.C. universities are now taking more action to protect students after five people were injured during that mass shooting at Morgan State. D.C. News Now's Liberty Zabala is at American University to break down new security measures there. Well, American University is enhancing its security measures by doing things like adding more cameras and more radios and even considering arming campus police with lethal force. And this comes a day after a mass shooting at Morgan State University in Baltimore left five people injured. Now American University Vice President Bronte Burley Jones released a letter to students about increasing security to keep them safe. She says currently AUPD officers officers are equipped with less than lethal chemical and impact weapons and trained in de-escalation tactics. She says the options under considerations will include the current approach of unarmed campus police. Another option would be to issue firearms to officers and supervisors. An alternative option would be to stage firearms in vehicles or introduce less than lethal options that could be used against armed intruders. Back in April, students protested at George Washington University after its decision to arm campus police. Meanwhile, some students at Howard University say increased security on campus would make them feel safer. We pay too much money not to have security. Yes, exactly. Yeah. There's no point in coming to school if you're not safe, yeah. if you're not feeling protected. And right now, American University has not made an official decision on whether to arm campus police just yet. They say first this fall they will gather and collect community input and then release those findings in spring of next year. For now, at American University, Liberty Zavala, D.C. News Now. Liberty, thank you. Take a look. Outside of the National Cathedral, more clouds in the sky. Meteorologist Damon Madsen joined us. Latest check on the forecast, Damon. What does that mean moving forward? Please say that there's not going to be any rain. Well, Mark, I feel bad because you said just yesterday how much you love the sunshine, <laughs> but uh, it looks like the opposite is taking place out there. Yeah, clouds, they're on the increase. You just saw them there behind the National Cathedral. And if we take a look out toward Hagerstown, even more clouds in the sky out to the west. Not very much blue to be found, and this is going to continue to be a trend as some changes begin to take shape with our weather pattern as we head toward the end of the week here. The first of those, of course, being those low clouds developing across portions of the DMV. Satellite and radar picture looks rather clear, but typically this satellite picture picks up on high clouds. Those ones that are higher in the sky you can see a few of those back across western Maryland, but we do have those low clouds also starting to roll in and the clouds we're seeing Nudging in from the west, that's from this very strong cold front. Look at how large it is, dragging some rainfall from Michigan and Canada all the way down toward the Ohio River Valley with plenty of clouds out in front of it. And this is the cold front that is slowly going to get closer to us through the day today 
and the night tonight, and that's part of the reason why we are going to see that increase in cloud cover. Now, it's not exactly going to turn overcast at the snap of a finger here, folks. We will still have a good amount of sunshine breaking through some of those clouds here this afternoon. That will allow us to warm up into the upper 70s, but we aren't going to get quite as warm as we have been in recent days. No 80s really expected out there today, but still a pretty pleasant Thursday ahead of us. Now, the clouds are on the increase. The question, though, is, like Mark asked, when are we going to see some rainfall roll into portions of the region? And are we still expecting quite a cool down by this upcoming weekend? We'll have a look at your full forecast coming up in just a bit. Uh, where are my products? Well, that's the question many ask themselves when they walk into the CVS Pharmacy on 14th Street in Northwest D.C. Nothing but aisles of bare shelves at that location, and people who work there tell D.C. News Now the, the reason is because young people clean it out almost every day by stealing things, including drinks and frozen food and school supplies, medications, pretty much anything that's not locked away. A security guard at the pharmacy says that there's not much that he can do to stop potential thieves. People who shop there say it's a major inconvenience, especially on hardworking people. I've seen it happen and it kind of scared me, to be honest. Just going in and randomly taking things. I can understand sometimes you're in need of something, you want to take something, but why do you have to bring a whole shopping cart to take stuff that don't belong to you? That's a shame. According to police data, the number of reported thefts on that block has nearly doubled since this time last year. In Montgomery County, police are searching for this person who broke into a T-Mobile store last week. That burglary happened last Thursday around 2 in the morning in Silver Spring. Surveillance video caught the suspect breaking the window, smashing store cases, and leaving with merchandise. We didn't see anything here since we came here. That is the first time that we see this one here, so I don't know. I think it's not going to happen again. Because of the increase in crime in the district, all of us are afraid. Yeah, there's a $10,000 reward for anyone with information leading to an arrest. Police are now offering up to $15,000 for the capture of Nassim Rolick a, in connection with an armed car jacking in Montgomery County. Rolick escaped from a Henrico County hospital back in August. The Virginia Department of Corrections believes that while on the run, he stole a car at gunpoint on September 1st in Gaithersburg. He's considered armed and dangerous and if you see him, do not approach him. Call 911. Well, the search for an escaped murder suspect, Christopher Haynes, is now entering its fifth week. The 30-year-old escaped in D.C. police custody at the George Washington University Hospital last month. This is video of him moments after taking off going through a backyard, and police say that his handcuffs were not secured when he was being moved by an officer. Well, since then, no one can confirm his whereabouts. Right now, there's a $30,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. It's Banned Book Week in the DMV, and the Sherwood Regional Library is holding a Banned Book Bagel Brunch this weekend. The event invites people to discuss a handful of titles, as well as the difference between challenged and banned books. It will be Saturday, starting at 11 a.m., and registration is free, but seats are limited. 52 businesses in the district received nearly $4 million in grants. It's part of the Great Streets Retail Grant Program. And community leaders hosted the thriving local D.C. business showcase to help small businesses. And businesses that receive money can use it for renovations and supplies. The program is designed to support businesses' growth and development in the district. It's connected to D.C.'s comeback approach. We are always interested in supporting businesses that help bring that vibrancy uh, to every corridor across our ward. Focuses on how more neighborhoods can have more of the amenities that everybody wants. I don't care where you live, you want the same things. Uh, and so we want to stay focused on that. Uh, the program is expected to create more than 2,000 jobs for D.C. residents. Well, a haircut and a new set of clothes can make all the difference in being able to secure a job. And that's the focus of Horizon Goodwill's job fair. Skylar Salas attended the event. She takes a closer look. Horizon Goodwill is known for helping surrounding communities, and now they are taking it one step further with their quarterly cut cloth work event where people can go through a one-stop shop towards employment. 
So it's really important that we host an event like this, um, of this nature, so that we can really help job seekers um, find employment and connect them to the resources they need. And the resources provided has made all the difference for people like Damien Geisel. I was downhill a lot. I kind of got into a predicament and went to jail. And then after that, I got I got out of jail, and then I had nowhere else to go. The cut cloth work event gives participants a haircut, clothes, and then a sit down one on one interview with potential employers. An event like this so that we can offer a lot of services for the clothing, the free haircuts. Um, it's just really good that we can just offer it in kind of like a one stop shop. It's really about partnership. It's about collaboration, and it's about bridging those two together. I'm super. Super, super grateful for Goodwill doing what they're doing for me because at one point I didn't have this. With the help of Horizon Goodwill, Geisel found a new home and a new job. They put you in a house and they help you find a job, they help you get back on your feet, they can help you with a lot of things, with a lot that you can get out of it. So I'm grateful for it. Now Horizon Goodwill will also be hosting another cut cloth work event in Front Royal, Virginia. Reporting in Martinsburg, West Virginia, Skylar Salas, DC News Now. All right, Skylar, thank you. Well, it's Thursday night football here in the DMV. The Washington Commanders will take on the Chicago Bears at FedEx Field. The game kicks off at 8.15 this evening. DC News Now will be there and we'll have much more coming up in DC News Now at 4.